Right, hello and welcome to our Jack's surprise, isn't he? Look at that. No, Short I'm day. here. Surprise you there. Whoa. Uh, do you like that? Hello and welcome to our match day preview for the upcoming game at Old Trafford uh, for Manchester United versus Southampton. And uh, we are pleased to be joined by Jack, live as always in the studio. Have you noticed I've been shopping, Jack? Yeah, yeah, where's uh, Cut on, where, where do you get those sort of things? What's that, Prada? Is it, is it Gookie? What is that? Well, I thought I'd buy a shirt just so that, you know, we might be able to put some money in the, in the, in the coffers so we can buy some players in the next... What is it? Two hours we got before we transfer window closes? Ring the bells. We've sold the last shirt. We can afford Danny's <laughs> contract. <laughs> <laughs> so go. But we are also, this is a big entrance. He's, he's waiting in the wings. You ready for this? We have Old Man G. This guy. Back again. Back I'm again. back. I'm back. I'm back. Thank you guys for having me back home. It's a pleasure. How are you guys doing? We, we are doing well. We're a little bit Salty, I think is it is salty a good phrase to use? We, we've been robbed yeah. uh, on two very dubious VAR decisions, so mm-hmm. we, we've now had our bad decision, and it will eventually even over the season from from there. So, um, so apart from that, we're, we're all good. But um, that, and how are you in, in terms of? I mean, I think last time we spoke, it was definitely Ollie's last game if he loses, and now you're yeah. you're winning the Premier League, so. Yeah, it's a lot as well. A lot has changed. I mean, if you'd spoken to me last week, I'd been thinking, right, what's going on? But you know, a lot of changes changed of this week. A loss to Southampton, sorry, uh, not Southampton, um, Sheffield United. That's even yeah. worse. Um, bottom of the league, arguably, in my opinion, two dodgy VAR decisions because he's clearly pushed behind, and that uh-huh. wide goal should have stood. But you know, it is what it is. It evens itself out apparently, um, and then a draw to Arsenal, and suddenly. Um, where we look like we're struggling. So I think that this game from a United fan and, he, and Ollie's point of view is kind of like a, if we're going to be even contemplating challenging a title, it's a must win. Um, but our home form does worry me. Yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, it, it kind of feels like for both teams. I mean, we I think we both had very dubious decisions go mm. against us recently. I mean, just briefly talking about ours, I, I went to the... The time and the effort of actually finding the images as painful as it is to look back at those those terrible displays we had one uh, we had two uh the first one being this one which was our blatant and obvious handball jack have you had any more feelings in regards to to this incident and any, anything that makes you think actually yeah i suppose it's a fair call no, not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought I was right at the time. My opinion hasn't changed. The only thing that's different is I'm just every time I try to forget about it, I find you know you've made another clipped up video of us acting really depressed to it. So <laughs> every time I think I'm over it, um, you send me another video of us being depressed. So it's hard to get out of this hole right now. <laughs> it is. I'll be honest with you, Jet. I thought it would make me feel better, but it hasn't. No, you know, it's I'm even just it. a, I know. I'm sorry. I keep looking at it. And then, um, and then the other one we had, uh, same game, would you believe? Uh, same game um, is this one, which uh, effectively we're now telling our players to roll up their sleeves when they play football uh, so we can be called on side. Um, another thing I'd like to point out in this image, if you ever actually have a look at the ball, it's moving. So it, <laughs> the ball's already been struck. So I, I, it, literally robbed. So um, let's move on. You need let's to stop looking on. at the pictures, mate, because I can imagine you've stayed up late in the last few nights looking at these pictures. <laughs> well, I, I, well, I think you put it perfectly when I sent you that that meme. It was just like you just wrote two words: "It hurts." Yeah, uh, it's just perfect. So um, I was having quite a nice night, and then oh, do you remember when you were really miserable? Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> when yeah, you watch- were angry at referees again? Watch it. That game we want to forget and put in the past. Here's something to remind you. Yeah. All I want is just a game that doesn't have any ridiculous referee or VAR decisions. So it's Mike Dean oh, tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, it, oh, oh. it all shapes up to be just another. <laughs> what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Always Mike Dean, man. Oh, geez. Just the sky needs to retire or something. It's just, oh, anyway. Guys, go on. I just <laughs> why did you depress me like that, Mike? Oh man, Mike. Oh uh, yeah, now so, now he's on our level. Yeah, bring him down. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. down. Welcome to our world. This is how fun it gets. Yeah. So 
but looking at it from a Southampton point of view, we'll, we'll put the Aston Villa game in the past. It's it's all done and dusted. Uh, looking forward to looking forward to tomorrow night's game. We have an abundance of injuries, so it mm-hmm. kind of feels like this is. I don't know. What do you think, Jack? It, it feels like a free hit to me. That's where uh, I'm at. Yeah, that's how confident I am. <laughs> it's. Yeah, it's not it's not easy. Three get three losses in a row, and it's on and it's a bit of a downward slip with all the injuries. Everything seems to be piled on a little bit. Does seem to be we are now in the midst of our of our you know our big downslope of the season. Could I could see it being a real battering for us, really? Yeah, but yeah. like I say, I got a lot of trust in our back line, so hopefully that'll be that'll be our saving grace. Yeah, hopefully what I'm I don't want to. For for the sake of our channel, I don't want it. But for the sake of the team, another nice, dry, boring nil nil game. Get like, <laughs> just <laughs> just drag it back in. Just get just find find a little bit of level footing. But uh, I'm not confident in it. <laughs> no, no. I, I think both teams are, are find it a bit of a struggle to score at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, just bringing you in here, old man G, because of course mm-hmm. the last two two Premier League fixtures you haven't scored a goal. Have I got that right? That's right, right? Uh, Premier, yes, because we didn't score against Liverpool, which was... Oh, no, you scored oh, against Sheffield, 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 Sheffield. Arsenal. Sorry, yeah, you're right. We have this, we, Oh, sorry, that's a lot. We did score against Sheffield. Harry yeah, Maguire did the ball. Sorry, 2-1. Yes, so uh, so it was just Arsenal. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, it's hardly an abundance of goals with your, no, your yeah. force going forward. I mean, is, is there any sort of things you think are contributing to that i mean there's not been loads of goals recently in general in the premier league i think a lot of people are forgetting you know of course there was a few fixtures over the weekend that were just simply one nil wins and uh, uh, you know last night's fixture as well so um but do you think there's anything contributing that from a from a man united perspective or are are we in for a a bit of a backlash tomorrow night or what's it looking like i mean i think the big thing is that probably i think people are beginning to like we are five months into the season obviously a lot of these, there was no pre-season i think you're seeing that like a lot of players are now we're seeing obviously with now a lot of people picking up injuries that a lot of players are quite tired in normal yeah. circumstances we'd be having like a winter break of some sort but we're like but we're playing we've just come out of december where people teams are playing on average two to three games a week and now we're still playing on average two games a week. United in particular are going to be going to February playing two games a week when you include FA Cup and Europa League. So I just think that people are just now starting to be quite tired. And this is where like the whole, I think I said this at the beginning of the season, I was like, to be honest, the teams that have the biggest squad depth and the most consistent squad depth are probably going to perform the best this season. Even though, you know, people start quite well when it's getting to this part where you're now starting to see tiredness injuries come in you'll now start to see where teams will eventually and I, I think that's the same case for Manchester United and so if you're a team that's just like um happy to just put 10 men behind the ball and defend for a bit for a while and just grind out results you're mm-hmm. probably going to end up being more six like there's no coincidence that Burnley are doing better now than yeah. they were at the beginning of the season right. because it's just easier to just put 10 men upon and block and defend because People are tired and they can't do it. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's a good point actually. When you when you think about it in that regard, you know, players are going to be getting fatigued, and and unfortunately for us, that's where where a lot of injuries have come. Mm. And you know, it's only going to be natural that these players are going to be picking up injuries. I mean, we've got. Um, I'm trying to make this as light as I possibly can, Jack. I'm really trying, but there's some you know depressing news in the sense that we've got Diallo who's out. Ramos likely going to be out. Yep. Uh, Walcott, who's out. Yep. Carl Walker Peters is out. Yep. I did tell you before the show actually it would be quicker to tell you who's who's okay. It's uh, you know Danny Ings is okay. So we got some great but... under twelves that are going to be. <laughs> um... Yeah, Sh- Sharon from the canteen is going to be starting up front. With, uh, yeah, with Danny. We've got, we've got half of uh, Eastley Town on loan. It's going to be okay. It's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> what I would say to give you guys hope is that Sheffield United had also had quite a few players out and we still lost 2 1 at home. So there's always hope, to be honest, against this Manchester United side, you know, because our defense. The the, 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 we've just got to hope what sort of Man United team that we get. If we get the Sheffield mm-hmm. United one, we'll, it, it would be fine. But any, but you've got to, so much class in that team now that they can turn up. It's just whether they do or not. not. It's, completely, yeah. it's completely, on, completely on you and how you decide to play football. 
It's exactly that. It's that kind of we're hoping for a flat, lackluster um, performance from Man United. I mean, the opposing fixture at St. Mary's, that second half, you guys destroyed us. Absolutely tore us to pieces. It was a kind of like at halftime, we were like, we, <laughs> this is great, going perfectly well. And then all of a sudden, it was kind of like, uh, what's happened to the team? And then at 60 minutes, you sort of suddenly realized, like, this is going to be a long final half hour. Mm. And we're totally outclassed. And yeah, they, we, we couldn't even complain about the goals because they were all really like, good goals. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn, they've, just, they've, done it good, they've done it good here. There's nothing we can't complain about any of these. Lo- losing in stoppage time and Fergie time and all that kind of stuff, it was kind of like you could see it coming. It was mm-hmm. coming and we just had an Edson Cavani masterclass. Yeah. So, um, so it just... So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, but are you predicting... A similar kind of performance from United to that one, or how do you think no. they're going to line? Oh, I, I'm I'm not confident to be honest. I'm I'm really not really? because I just think that he's being nice. Because <laughs> no, 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 no. Because the thing about any United fan knows that the thing about this team is that like it, we are inconsistent FC, and Solskjaer has what can, you can summarize Solskjaer's reign by we go on like ridiculously good runs. Um, mm. Uh, and then we'll get to a point where we have a dip in form and then we'll come back and have a ridiculously good run again. And I think the fears United fan is that like, especially because we haven't got any transfers, is that we're just going to go, we're just going to start to get into that dip of poor form like we had at the beginning of the season. And then maybe towards the end, we'll pick up that run again. Um, so it looks like certain players are lacking a bit of confidence as well. So at the time, maybe like like Rashford and Martial, to be honest, haven't really been that great as of recently. And so really, unless Pogba or Bruno turn up and do something, there's not really a lot left. Defensively, we're still conceding from set pieces, from silly goals. So to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Southampton scored similar to how they scored last time, which was from a set piece and from a court. Well, I think they were both. One was from a corner and one was from a well, war pass free kick. So I wouldn't be surprised if you scored again from those because we haven't actually changed. We still concede from those. Mm. So I, I I wouldn't be surprised if this was a draw. And on top of that, sorry, our home form has actually not been that great compared to our away form. So I'd be a lot more confident if we're playing away from home. But for some reason at home, we just seem to not be able to do it. Interesting. Wow. Well, I think uh, if you ask my Southampton fans, I can see a few in the chat section here. Um uh, Lou's already put in taking nil and nil every day. Yeah, um, big dreams. Big like, dreams. <laughs> it's like we're, we're all like we're literally, you know, uh, we're about twenty three hours before kickoff. We're all like, take a point right now, take a point right now. Yeah. Um, but J- Jackie, are you feeling as confident as? Uh... Hey man, I'm always confident. You can never <laughs> knock me down. But what, what is re- what realistically can we hope for here? I mean, it, have we got enough to to Snatch a one nil win. That's the us all week. That is what we, we can hope for. But we, uh, but we've done it now. If you, you know we, we did it against Liverpool the other week. I know it's that's starting to become a more regular thing that happens to Liverpool now. But you know it's still you know that's what we, nice, we need to nice do. Show, Jack. I enjoyed that. That's for everyone. Yep. Um, <laughs> you know we are the, we are the kind of team that can just get that early goal from a set piece and then shut it off pretty well. It's just. We seem to. There's a lot of times we tend to switch off when we're when we're shutting off. Like like when we were two 0 up, we just were like, "Well, that's that done. We can lock this down. Good to go." And then we were just made to look like fools. So, do you find it a bit weird that we're able to hold on to a one nil win, one nil lead, but we're not able to hold on to a two nil lead? Have you noticed that? Yeah, but that's just like (laughs) (laughs) only score one. Hold on, fine. Two. Game over. I understand. I, that's just a feeling that's built into me, though, as a Southampton fan. It's like, right. yeah, 2-0, I don't like that. I don't like yeah. 2-0 at all. 1-0. 2-0, Benrick, get one of them. Definitely. Them. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's his, yeah, that's the record, isn't it? That, that, I think that's why it happened, is all the Southampton fans in the chat saying, well, when, Bed- when Bednarik sc- scores, we lose 3-2, and it was just that over and over and over again. It just wheeled that game into existence. And the more they said it, the more it was like, well, there's one, there's another, and there yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you yeah, think it's it. a good, if your defender is scoring, do you think he thinks that he's like a striker or something and he forgets his defensive responsibilities? Yeah, he's like, I can let this one slip. I've got a belter today. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks, I've I snagged the header. I'm going for the perfect hat trick. So he's looking out for his left and right foot <laughs> going forward. So that, that's basically what he's doing. There's an extra bonus for defenders who score on the brace. They get a real big... <laughs> He's in, he's in his own fantasy league team. He's like, right, I'm going to get these points today. <laughs> so, uh, but but yeah. So let, let's have a uh, audacious time of the show. Uh, let's talk about our score predictions. Um, as always, we like to let our guests go first on this show. Um, by the way, in the chat section, if you stick in all your score predictions now, uh, we'll be going through those shortly. Um, let's go first. Um, oh, man, G, what are you thinking? Oh... <sighs> Um, one one, I think. Oh. I'm gonna go one one because, based off home form, based on the fact that like um, that we're not really clicking. Um, and I think I'm gonna give Bruno to score for United, and then Danny Ings to score for Southampton. Because even though you've got Danny Ings, I still think because I suspect I could be wrong. But I suspect he's going to play Lindelof and um, well, okay. I'll, I'll say it before him. If Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer plays Eric Bay, I think we win the game quite Ooh. comfortably. Okay. Um, but if he doesn't, and I expect he's not going to play Bay, he's probably going to play Victor Lindelof. Um, then I expect probably like probably a draw, um, and and Danning's will probably score because I think he can boss both Maguire and Lindelof quite comfortably, or you'll score from a Ward Prowse set piece because McTominay, who I think will also play likes to concede free kicks very close to our box. And Ward Prowse knows what to do, so. Yeah, it's pretty one. It's better than a penalty if we get a free kick on the edge of the box for us. It's uh, Yeah, it's, it's like a penalty, isn't it? Yeah, it's exactly. like <laughs> Actually, when we get a penalty, he said, do you mind if we just take it outside and yeah. uh, <laughs> take a wall in and uh, we're kind of better at those. Um, so there we go, 1-1. One, one. Look at that. Jack, I mean, what are you thinking? I mean, now I know he's just being nice. <laughs> <laughs> we lost to yeah, Sheffield well, United, man. I, I, I don't, I don't know what to say, really. I, I don't. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Um, I, same as the things we've been saying. I think it's it'll be one nil. Again, I, I would have honestly thought the same. When you see Lindelof and Maguire playing together, you always see Maguire seems to either be overcompensating for Lindelof, or he just mm. they, they just don't they just don't pair well together. Mm. Although separately, they're pretty good centre back so if those two start I, I will be more confident especially, mm. especially with everything you said mm. but yeah a real tight 1-0 that's what I, that's what I think it is but in, but it could very much go the other way wow. <laughs> in, in, in wow. a big big swing of a way if I was on your <laughs> show if I was on your show I'd be like yeah you'll probably win this 5-0 <laughs> <laughs> I was a little high 5-5 five, 5-2 five, five, two, five, two. that's more of a Southampton score mm. Two nil yeah, up, okay. and then that's fair. That's fair. As long as we get a couple, uh, what am I going to go for? <sighs> Joe, if we do get a win, it's a big if. Um, it will be a smash and grab one nil. Um, and on this show, as you know full well, I'm not allowed to predict a draw. No, it's not. Is that right, Joe? Is that still standing? It's not allowed. Yeah, it's that's. <laughs> That's not what this channel's about. This channel okay. is, is about a biased opinion. <laughs> exactly. So, so there we go. I reckon it's going to be a smash and grab, 1-0 win. So there we go. Did I get that in there? Was that sneaky enough? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's go over to the chat section. Um, let me see who we've got here. We've got Tom in the room. Uh, Tom Ranks is going to be a 1-1. One, one. Uh, Tristan would love a 0-0. Nil, nil. <laughs> this is where we're at, Saints fans. We'd love a nil nil. Um, so there we go. Uh, Real in the face when we when I watched like the intro to this, and it's us like watching us go top of the league, and then ten minutes. Later, I know, it's right? Like, not to mystic nil nil would be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, real transformation takes real honesty. So that we're at the honesty stage of this process at the moment. So uh, optimistic nil nil from Lou there. Um, Case going for a 3 1 man, you hefty injury list is not helping, in my opinion. Absolutely right. We'll get onto that just shortly. Um, Judah to Tyler's going 3 1 man, you. So it's not even in the consensus that this might be uh, might be uh, in the favor of Man United. Yeah, so we shall see. We shall see. Uh, 
What's this from here? Let's leave at least something for them, not allowing Williams to leave. Yeah, <laughs> quite. yeah. Why are you holding on to Brandon Williams? Have you not? I, seen I thought, I've got no idea. I've got no it's like idea. Third choice. I've, I've, I've literally got. I, I'll put, I mean, I'm, I'm about to. Once I finish this, at about, uh, just about ten after ten, I'm about to have a long rant about the diabolical Manchester United way that we handle transfers. You know, letting people go, signing players, and. I've got no reason why we didn't allow Brandon Williams to go to get Premier League to, to go to you guys. I've got no idea. Yeah. No it, idea. It, it, I, to, to put it in perspective, our second choice left back, Jake Vokins, we've just loaned him to Sunderland. Mm. Second choice. Your third choice yeah. is not being allowed to leave and yeah. you know, complain I, about squad depth. It's madness. I, I, I just don't I, I don't get it. I I, I really um we it's weird because we have there are certain positions where we have multiple players in that position who stay and aren't allowed to leave. So, for example, the uh, the left back situation and also the goalkeeping situation because we have Henderson, De Gea, and Sergio Mero. Sergio Mero is not playing, wants to leave, and we're like, "Oh no, you can't!" And go, "Why not?" <laughs> but then, when, in the areas that where we are defi defi deficit, like as a centre back or right, wi or right wing. We, 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 there's no, even no interest, no talk, no discussion actually going to find those players. So the United board recruitment um, in that respect is a bit crazy. Um, you should, you should uh, allow players to leave, get them off your wage bill. It's uh, clearly... Well, even a... exchange, you know, I take I take Bednarak, to be honest, at Manchester United right now. You know, like any of the Saints defenders, if they want to come to Manchester United and become part of a title-charging team, you know, we can exchange. We give you Brandon Williams and you give us... Best of God or Bednarek, and it's happy days. That's that's even when you say that, you know, that's not that's not that's not an equal balance. <laughs> <laughs> Best the, the, of God's the, worth at least one of Bruno Fernandez's shins, at least one of them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a difference time makes, isn't it? Because I remember when we used to joke on this channel about allowing Vestergaard to leave for Leicester for 50, 60 million, and now we'd just be like. Yeah, it's about right actually. Uh that price point. So um so yeah, that uh that definitely is uh where we're at. I've just seen in the chat here that apparently Minamino is linked to oh. same. That's interesting. I don't, I don't believe this chat. <laughs> really? Uh um, I'll, this has Fabrizio, I usually got to look at Fabrizio Romano. Um gives me uh Transfer for transfer news. I mean, have a quick yeah. look because that would be a very be a weird one. That seems like be a be very a... weird one. Yeah, you've got us guessing on it, red and whites. Yeah, I haven't I seen the bit Ciromano tweet it. Um, that's... yeah, but you've got the more reliable source of our chat. <laughs> <laughs> It's that athletic advert, you know. Oh, no, yeah, on. there's some. It, it seems to be going on Twitter, actually. I think uh, Transfer News Live, Southampton Advanced, uh, David Ornstein, David Ornstein, who's quite reliable, actually. Thank God, somebody knows. Wow. David, that is actually, uh, so yeah, at David Ornstein. So 10 hmm. minutes ago, it was reported. Wow, there we go. Interesting. See, you, see at least you're doing something. You know what I mean? Like, like we can't. You at least do, you're doing something. And my, yeah, I, I really can't believe there's no centre back movement at all. You know, yeah, it's quite amazing. <laughs> it, it, it's crazy. I just want to bring up this comment here. It's, it's amusing me. Two things are guaranteed in life: death and Mike's camera dying. A hundred percent. This camera needs to be have a little refresh, little tap on the. So that there we go. Um, I want to bring back to your um, mentioned earlier, or Menji, about the back four lineup for you because you said about mm. if Lindelof starts mm. you reckon it'll be a draw and mm. if by starts you reckon it's gonna be tell us more mm. about that. What do you mean? Um simply put Eric Bay is our best defender. Right. Without a shadow of a doubt. And but more importantly, um Eric Bay when we play Eric Bay um, the team plays different differently. So we we tend to press more, tend to go higher because um, like because Eric Bay basically has a lot more pace, a lot more recovery place, and is an all-round better defender, you find that likes of Maguire or Fred McTominay, whoever it is that's in front of him, don't necessarily track back as much 
And so as a result, the forwards, um, the front players tend to be more, tend to press for, tend to go because they know um, that Eric Bay can basically, so even if, so even if Danny Ings gets a ball over the top, et cetera, Eric Bay can catch him, win the ball off and it's fine. And the attacking plays can continue. The problem with Lindelof is that, um, Maguire is that they don't have that pace. And so they often do get done on the ball of the box. So you often play two holding midfielders, which is usually Fred and McTominay, or sometimes yeah. Matic and Fred or Pogba in that position to come back to help protect the back two. And so the attacking phase of play tends to be a lot less um, intense, if that makes any sense. We just play, I think one of the reasons why we even actually got our one run of wins was because I think Lindelof was out of a back injury and Bay was actually playing. And we were able to continue to press and push likes of Wolves and Burnley, etc. because he was playing. Um, I'm not... I would be... I still think he'll play Lindelof. There is a chance he might play Bay just because usually he alternates between the two in a seven-day period. So, But I suspect he's going to play Lindelof because that's Solskjaer's preferred pairing. But in my opinion, it's not the best pairing because Maguire with Bay, Maguire becomes even better because he doesn't have to worry so much about recovering and coming back and he can actually do what he's, he's good at, um, if that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. We're kind of in a similar position ourselves because, you know, we've noticed a difference when Vestergaard hasn't started because mm. there's been, he's been unbelievable in uh, doing these long looping balls forwards and mm. sort of finding players and being almost like a, a playmaking centre back, which is, which is mm. pretty odd, really, you know, certainly mm. for, the, for the way we're playing football. But um, mm. so we, we don't really totally understand where you're coming from there. Mm. Jack, what what are you thinking? Who's going to be in our lineup tomorrow? Well, I need to take a look at the full injury list so I can ah, pick from good the, man. Uh, so I can pick from who's the, uh, left. Not a lot, <laughs> <laughs> not a lot really. So I'm uh, uh, I'm going to assume the back line is going to be hopefully Valerie because Kyle Walker Peters isn't back yet, is he? So oh. and I don't want them to pull Wall Prowse out of position again and make him play in that that role. Like we said, the last game, it seemed to be so much of just rotating your spot in the team. Like, we didn't understand where anybody was playing or what position they were in. That suddenly, yeah. one minute, you know, Wall Prowse was in the centre of the park and then he was on the left wing and then he was right back. And it's like, what's going on here? <laughs> Where's everybody playing? So in rather fact, than just start Valerie, who's meant to be in that position and he sticks to that position, that's what I want. <laughs> right. I did hear today, I think... You're not going to believe this. Valerie, Valerie is, has uh, agreed a loan deal at uh, Birmingham City. Makes sense. Because we don't so, need well, fullbacks, mate. No, you don't. We, we only need two. We only need so, two fullbacks, and then everybody else can play that position otherwise. So, welcome to the South Island. We've sold both our second voices in left back and, and right back position. Brilliant. Um, so, now that, that Valerie's uh, not, not available, um, Right, so I'm going to be starting Shane Long at left back. <laughs> <laughs> if you actually have a look on the uh, the Sky Sports team sheets, the last I think the last two or three games, there's been uh, a number and then unknown written as a name. <laughs> no joke, no joke. Go and have a look; it's utterly insane. And then, literally a week after, the the name is then who was that number seventy five? All oh, right, okay, cool. How do you spell that? Oh, brilliant. Okay. <laughs> It's so not how it's, you spell it, it's how you pronounce it. It's how you spell it, how you pronounce it. Very yeah. difficult. I, I, I need a person to tell, walk me through it. Exactly. It's like a countdown conundrum every time. It's a uh, very difficult so, so to pronounce. Just as a question to, to you guys, like, who do you think, based on obviously what you know about United and and of the squad that we're most likely going to pick, uh, pick, who do you think that United should be wary of going into this game? Wow. Um, like we say, all depends on who's playing. <laughs> <laughs> like, usually, it would honestly, I mean, it would honestly be like Kyle Walker Peters gassing forwards. You know, that would be really yeah. tricky. For, um, I think that would that would be would that be Juan Bazaka's side to be playing on? Uh, yeah, it would be. So yeah. that would that would have been difficult. You know, going forward, you know, Diallo has been absolutely incredible in the middle, but now he's definitely out for the weekend. So well, now for a, a long spell. Mm. He's been great at just running with the ball. He, we, we, he was it 
well, was it the not the Villa, the Leicester match? He, mm. he was he was in the middle of the game, all park, all, middle of the park, all game, mm. playing really well, and then we had the pull into fullback. And suddenly we lost a, just a ton of creativity in the middle of the park. Mm. So, mm. but he won't be there this weekend tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, no, no. Well, at, at that point, Ings, mate, that's all you really need to worry about. Danny Ings. Just <laughs> <laughs> Danny, Danny Ings had due a goal. Um, definitely. Um, someone's put up a comment here that I thought Romeo had a great game on, on Saturday. I totally agree. I think he had a brilliant game. Um, and and it will was he be so... playing tomorrow? No, he's injured. Um, so that's uh, another thing to consider. But Ordinarily, it would have been James Ward Prowse free kick and a Danny Ings from something. That that's what you've got to be worried about um, tomorrow night. So, but uh, of course, that leaves uh, a lot of holes. <laughs> so, <laughs> moving the the question uh, swiftly over to you, Old Midget. Who who should we be worried about? Get a cup of tea, Jet. Uh, <laughs> Get comfy. Well, like I said, for me, the most important player. That potentially must is, is Eric Bay, just because I feel that if your only main one is Danny Ings, I think Eric Bay would pocket Danny Ings fairly comfortably. Um, but I don't think he's going to play. Um, so I think I think it's the man that caused you pain beforehand, and that's Edison Cavani. Um, right. I think Edison Cavani, um, while he's been un unlucky in the last sort of two games. Like his movement in the box has been so so good, and like we and because some of our other four players like Marshall etc have not been at it recently, um, he's really been the one that's really led the line for us properly. You know, so I, if Pogba and Bruno can basically turn up, mm -hmm. um, Edison, Edison Cavani becomes very I think I think a bit more dangerous. And the fact that he was able to get in those positions in your back line before with that intelligence, um, I think he'll probably do the same again. So. I would say he's probably our most dangerous player in that sense, but he's he's more dangerous when Pogba and Bruno um, right. are, are are effective. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, just thinking back to that that term fixture at St Mary's, I mean, it was just devastating. I mean, they were talking about the the pace, but it was just the knowledge of mm. like where the ball was going to be. Mm -hmm. like, of, intuition of the ball's going to be mm. played there so i need to be there and mm. already diving for a header that's suddenly mm. going to be going to play a ball onto the top of my head mm. it was unbelievable and mm. it was really sort of back to the glory days of edison cavani playing at napoli mm. and doing mm. what he does for, for all those we were all, we were all making so many jokes when you signed him yeah, we were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, even even you lot were making jokes about yeah, it. Yeah, we were. We were. We were. So lucky that it, he's for the shirt sales. Yeah. That's what we said, wasn't it? But, really? um, look at him. He's like he's absolutely classed. <laughs> I think the thing with the thing the things that surprised a lot of the Iron fans, Cavani, is that like he's actually he's a professional. Like so, and, and I know it's almost a oxymoron, but they're like a lot of footballers that are not. I would argue professional footballers. By that I mean, like conduct themselves in a way off the pitch, but certainly on the pitch in a professional manner. So they train hard, they work hard, and when they're on the pitch, so even if when Cavani doesn't score, I, you still see him making those runs. You still see him tracking back, coming back to defend, clearing appearances. He doesn't just sort of ah oh, and fizzle out of games. Like he works hard from you know zero minutes to ninety minutes, despite the fact he's like despite the fact he's thirty three, and I think. You appreciate that effort and that work mm. ethic, you know, on top of the talent that he has, as opposed to certain footballers that have a lot of talent, but then, you know, that in certain games, they just have absolutely mere games, more so because they can't be bothered to actually do the basics of tracking back or right. looking, making a pass. Am I, am I making sense? Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Absolutely. Where does Paul Pogba fall into that line of professional players? <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be fair to Paul Pogba, I don't think he's actually been, in terms of recent form, of the, the worst offender. I think no. he's actually been okay. He's been okay. I think Marshawn Rashford, I think you could argue, have been. And I won't say Bruno because, like, I think he's just he's allowed a bit of a, of a dip because of just how he's been so far. So, and he's played pretty much every single Manchester United game yeah. <laughs> since September. So, I think he's allowed a bit of. But Rashford and Martial, um, I think, have um, uh, either need a rest or need to rotate. So, um, I mm. and I also think that 
Oli seems to do this thing, and I, I think he'll probably do that. He might do it again, again with you guys. That's where, in order to fit Pogba into the team, he puts Pogba on like the left or the right, and might and drops one of Marshall Rashford so you could put Cavani in, and that causes a problem because it means that both of our wings are quite unbalanced. So sometimes you find if he plays Rashford on the left and sure, we'll be just attacking down your left hand side, our left hand side to your right hand side easily. But our right hand side would be dead. And so you'll find that we'll just be playing balls from the right to the left so we can go down. But if he plays Pogba on the left and Rashford on the right, Rashford's not a right winger. And so both of the wings are, are, are in balance. And so we have to play through the middle to try and create things. So if I was a Southampton man, I would say, okay, which side is United's weak side and play down that. It's most likely going to be our right hand side or just pressure us through the middle if if Pogba and Bruno aren't having a good game, if yeah. that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, that's that's an interesting one. I mean, it, I think that there was a game when Mourinho was in charge where we went 2 0 up against you, and mm. I think it was a 2 2 in the end. But you literally, the, the goals you score, I think, it was from Lukaku. Yeah, uh, went literally straight down the middle. It was almost as if it was just comical. Uh, <laughs> just, just like, what is happening? It's just, I thought we won that game. Did we win that game? I you think might have done. I think, was, I think it was. I think it was another three-two. I think actually, wasn't that? Was that not the? Two, was that not the two all when that was what Mark Hughes got fired for? Yes, it was. Yeah, and the Cedric free kick. Yeah. Okay. We remember uh, every point on this show. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember. I remember every time we score two goals and don't win. Well, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sticks. Cut sticks and curl. But we go two 0 up and don't know, don't we? It's uh, definitely no. Know. I only remember that because I was I, I was walking home in the rain watching it on my phone and Cedric scored that free kick and like I just I just shouted forgetting where I was. Yeah, and there was a lot of people stood around me just. <laughs> What's he screaming out? Oh, good fun! Oh, good fun. I'm, I'm I'm actually re- steaming because you guys are going to sign Minamino and United are not going to sign absolutely anybody. Like, so I actually envy you guys going into this game tomorrow because you're like, at least you've got someone coming in that's new to, to sort something out, and we're just stuck with. Uh, I, I literally just got a text from my dad saying, you know, Minamino Minamino is a great player. You're going to love him. So it's it's confirmed now. Dad's dad's wow. Dad's <laughs> me, dad, dad, the Liverpool fan is, is texting me saying, so. You know, did they learn nothing from the Danny Ings deal? I mean, surely you know, they yeah. turn him into a world class player again. Because um, who's playing? Who's playing on? Who's your current right winger right now? If if, if you remind me, you play- Stuart or, Armstrong or, on that wing most of the time. Well, he, or, or Walcott, he's injured. Yeah, fine. It's so like, Walcott. so you'd be got so minimum would kind of be like competition for Walcott, basically, or just how would how do you think he would? That type of play would fit into Southampton. From what I've seen of him, he playing. He sort of. He, 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 they tried to slip him into that sort of front front three of Liverpool, didn't they? On the, mm. on that wing, and we mm. seem to be rotating up our front. We past few games, we almost seem to be playing that same sort of four three three sort of thing, where mm. Danny Shea and Theo all seem to move about and go. Up. And mm. to me, it seems like everyone's out of position and crowding the box and not sure what they're mm. doing. Mm. If that's what they're thinking of doing and they want a more consistent attacking guy in that role, I think Minamino would probably be a great player to look at. And I've mm-hmm. been saying that everyone's in our, you know, around the club will probably say centre midfielder or centre back or another fullback. But I've been saying all transfer window that I want a striker because, mm. you know, Danny's on a bit of a drought, Shea's on a drought, Theo mm. misses a lot, Redmond's injured a lot, Gineppo's injured a lot. So we need a, a goal scorer and someone that's really creative up top. So. I'm excited. Yeah. That's, that's the truth, and that's what's going to happen. Oh, it's going to be When does it end? When does, uh, when, does, uh, when does it shut off? Midnight, is it? Uh, 11 o'clock. So, 11 o'clock. in about um, just over an hour. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think um, it was going to be a bit odd to see Shea was on the bench on Saturday. I was a little bit surprised by that. I'm not sure whether it's whether he's just sort of rotating players and he knew that. He was going to get three injuries on Saturday's game, so he thought he better rest rest someone. Um, but yeah, I mean, probably see him back in the squad tomorrow. But I think um, my thoughts on Minamino, he, he always looks like he, was, he wasn't he was particularly welcome at Liverpool. Mm. Whenever he came on the pitch, he always looked like everyone was just kind of like, 
it's, it's, it. it's funny you say that because a Liverpool fan I know was telling me that like um, that there seem to be some issues in behind the scenes of dressing room where like like in Liverpool it's a kind of like a I won't say a cleat but a very closed family kind of thing. You know, right. where like, outside some sort of, so it, it's, I'm getting the impression that I don't think there was as warm a reception to him sort of coming in, as it were. Um, and maybe he's just been on the periphery, and I think that's probably affected how he's performed in training. So Klopp has kind of just said, you know, you know, we're not doing the most, etc. So yeah. that I think is probably what's happened um, with him. I think it was him. When, when he arrived at the club, there's a really sad video of him arriving at his first day there and there's no they're all away on the a Champions League run mm. so there's no one at the club so it's just him walk around mm. the training ground by himself like yeah oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> Big one I remember saying I think that's that's weird yeah. but it, it, when you look at the Liverpool squad you do look you look at the front three and, the, and that core mm. of the team and that first starting mm. 11 and there's there's such a unit in the squad you can see that mm. there'll probably be there but it has to be like, you've seen in Liverpool this is, there has to be competition eventually because like Yes, Salah scored two goals against West Ham. Great, but they didn't score for what was it four or five games in a row or something? You know, um, before then. So I don't think Liverpool can rely on that front three like indefinitely. They're going to have to bring people in. It's that thing that Fergie was, the, was was amazing. That was refreshing mm. the squad when mm. things started getting dry. You, you know, you're not you're not safe you're safe with it. You know, and Benita. Look at Van, you know Van Nistelrooy was there for you know. Was it three, four seasons? Not, not, not there a lot long at all. But you, in, in that time, I thought you, you think he's done amazing. When you look at the the, the amount of Premier Leagues you won with Van Nistelrooy, you think, oh, no wonder he didn't stay around that long. <laughs> like it's, he, he, it was always that thing. In in this league, you need to do that. And it's, I think, it's the same sort of thing that's happened at City, where all these players have aged out and they've fought poorly. Mm. Now Liverpool doing it, sort of get to this point again where it's like, well, Salah's now aging out a little, you know, or not aging mm. out, but. You need to change it up and do something different. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take all the crops. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they, they, Liverpool appear to be scoring again, um, so they, they, they're back to normal. But it, it was quite bizarre to see them not. I think it was like they hadn't scored in like seven hundred minutes or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And it was just madness to think that. And one thing that always annoys me is that Jurgen Klopp always goes on about they've got so many fixtures to play. Um, it's impossible for them to perform. A, squad depth but they just don't use it and mm. they have like you know okay they've got a lot of injuries they've got van dyke who's uh, acl he's going to be out for mm. whole season. but then they have these other academy players that they just don't use and i don't mm. really i lose a lot of sympathy mm. from a southampton perspective where we're just yeah. like, we do not have a second choice left yeah. or right back anymore if yeah. they're injured someone's playing out of position yeah. that, that's where we're at yeah and, for it to be so i just get wound up on stuff no like that. no i agree with you and, and to be honest this is this is this is what i see a lot of when city liverpool fans when they complain about like oh our best choice was out on something because even as a united fan but the, the, but the thing is, is that because we're a big club and because and because um a lot of our players obviously play a lot of games but people don't actually think for example that mason greenwood is an academy player like so they were trade they treated so mason greenwood's first break was just last season mm. um and he's academy graduate but they didn't treat him like that they just treat him like a manchester united player right or brandon williams for example is going to you guys he was from that and we had to rely on greenwood and, and brandon williams um two recent academy players for pretty much most of the season because of injuries but they were treated by the public and by a lot of fans as you know just in the squad, seasoned like, seasoned players when they literally right. just come from the academy. I'm not, even, and and let's not even talk about like the Rashford and McTominay, etc., who obviously were there. But then with Liverpool and City, as you rightfully said, um, as soon as their best choice forwards, midfielders, etc., are out, it's like, oh, woe is me. What's going on? We don't right. have anyone. And I'm like, hang on a minute. Where's your academy? What's going on? Like, oh, we've got all our sense backs out. Nate Phillips is there. Reece yeah. Williams is there. You know, you have players in your academy. Why don't you play them? Because other teams are playing them. So what's mm -hmm. your excuse? So I agree with you. It does irk me sometimes when I hear people go, well, we're amazing because we managed to do Liverpool. Like we managed to, despite all the players that we have out, we still managed to win. You go, cry me a river, you know. Yeah. <laughs> other, play other teams have done that as well. You know, it's not just Liverpool. 
sit yeah. down. Absolutely, absolutely. And then we, we have phones up. We, I mean, I the, the biggest emphasis was this was when we if when we went to Paris to PSG and we had like six injuries made to injuries out. We were playing Tahif Chong, mm-hmm. playing Brandon Wilson, and we still managed to go to Paris and beat PSG with that essentially kids from sixth form playing against likes of Mbappe and Verratti and Thiago Silva and wins. So, you know, it's possible. You just have to put a bit of faith in them. That's it. Absolutely. So it's, it's brilliant to see that when that comes up and you actually see some some fruits of the labour of the Youth Academy and actually coming through. And, that, and that's what I think a football club should, should be all about rather than simply chucking money at a problem uh, i mean the, the other major problem we have and we're just looking through this this chat section as we're chatting here and there's there's mentions of like wage demands and that's the other challenge we've got as a club i mean i'm just thinking about your famous striker alexis sanchez in terms of like it, it, literally his weekly wage you you get change from our entire squad weekly wage from his weekly wage yeah. <laughs> no joke you actually get change, and a lot of it. It's it's just that's how broken the Premier League is in regards to the money this, differences between the top and them. This was why when people, said, when people said, "Oh, Jose Mourinho was like is the best, it's awesome, etc." One of the things that I I struggled to forgive him for was the purchase of Alexi Sanchez. You know, because he because City were linked to him as well, but mm. Jose thought process has always been to try and spite his rivals and to take players from them so they don't have them just to show that he can be that he can that he can get one on them. Um yeah. he did that at Real Madrid as well. Um he did that with, with a lot he did that a lot with Chelsea, just buying players just so that um I think Salah for example, I think when he originally came to Chelsea, Liverpool linked with him and it's kind of like, right, I'll get him. So right. that, that Alexis Sanchez was one of the worst if not the worst sign that Manchester United made purely from the fact that he was on so much money, did absolutely nothing. And to be honest, Inter Milan, Conte, I love them. I love that team so much because Conte took so many, so much of our deadwood. Yeah. I, think, I think the last time I checked, there's like three, or, I think there's like four ex United players at Inter uh, Milan Lukaku, yeah. Sanchez, Ashley Young, and I think Matteo yeah. Damian. They're all wow. <laughs> Inter Milan. So I, I have massive respect for Inter Milan and Conte because if he didn't take them, there weren't actually that many other teams that would and we'd be stuck no. with these players having to play. So That's respect to Conte, man, you know? Yeah, and, and you guys did it with Berbatov as well. I remember when Berbatov was going to United, they was heavily linked with um, City or or, mm. or something like that. So, mm. um, so certainly not done in the past before. But... Um, but yeah, madness, eh? Absolute madness. There's a uh, our, our stat man's in in the room. Uh, Red Devil Studio expect a random bid for a fullback from us. <laughs> <laughs> it's so desperate. It's so desperate. Literally, I, guys, I would love if Brandon Williams went out on loan to you guys. I really, really would because it, it'd be mutually beneficial. I think you know. 100%. Yeah. We, I just, we need a direct of football, basically, guys, because. I just don't understand the football logic or rationale in this club or the decisions of things they make. I just don't get it. Um, and in a way, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been a victim of, because there's a lot of criticism on Solskjaer. I think what a lot of people need to realise is that the board's and the club's ambitions are not the same as the fans. And what what this transfer window has shown to me is that the board are quite happy with United just about getting top four. Mm. Yeah. Just yeah. doing that and doing that and doing that. Because if they were, if they really were like an Abramovich, for example, who basically spent 200 million for Chelsea and say, listen, I'm giving you this money because I want you to compete for the Champions League and Premier League, not to just get yeah. yeah, top four, whatever. Whereas United, this is the closest we've been to a, to a title challenge or top for eight or something years. And the reward for that is silence. Right. You know, so... But what do you need? What do you need, realistically? In, in the... Time, in the... In the, in the, in the, the next hour and 10 minutes, what do you need? <laughs> <laughs> ideally, ideally, um, ideally a centre-back and a right-back, I think. Okay. I think, um, that would be any centre-back, to be honest, just because um, Rojo is, is leaving. 
Um, Phil Jones isn't a professional footballer. <laughs> um, <laughs> he just isn't. <laughs> I, I, think, I think Mike, I'd rather like Mike, you go to you, and you take Phil Jones's spot, you know. So, like, that's that's. I know United fan will disagree. You know, if you want to go and, and replace Phil Jones, please do, because he's not a professional yeah. footballer. Uh, I'd see if my wages will match. This time. <laughs> yeah. You know how much he's on? You know how much he's on? Scare me. Go on. He's on to, he's on, I'm fairly sure he's on 200k. <laughs> yep. 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 Money what? well spent that. Money yep. well spent. You yep. could, you could have Danny Ying's three times for that. Don't let him know that. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we could we could exchange oh, we give you Danny Ings and we can give you Phil Jones. In fact, you don't no, have to pay a transfer fee. You don't have to pay a transfer fee. You can just have him, you know, like just 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 off the books, you know. So he's off our. No, nah, it's, it's... it'd probably be in the contract for Brandon Williams. You can have Brandon on loan, but you've got to sign Phil. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he didn't take him. That's why he didn't take him because you're like ah, we we don't. Want how did him. seriously? How has that? It was Elon like a five year deal that happened. Yeah, it was. It, Literally, right. ju just I think just when Solskjaer was interim, just when he came in, um, so he wasn't on Solskjaer because he was interim coach or whatever. So he wasn't in. Um, they basically offered um, uh, Phil Jones a, a new four, I think four or five year. I have a feeling it was a five year, but four or five year contract, just like that, based okay. on I don't exactly know what. And this is what our club does. They just offer contracts to players just because it will be cheaper to offer a player a new contract than go actually go out and sign a replacement for that player or actually try and lease that player out to get some money back from him. That's why we offer contracts to, to Matter. Matic, I think, is 32-33, offering a new contract. You know, most big clubs don't offer big contracts to players that are above 32-33. No, no. They prove or demonstrate you I mean you even seen the thing with Ramos at Real Madrid for example yeah. you know they don't do that United of course we do of course, yeah. of course we do I bet he got, he's got a statue in that contract too <laughs> <laughs> the Phil Jones end oh, oh man this 200 is grand a week that's just insane um we'll now Phil Jones for free that pretty much sums up really but um oh my goodness so I'm in shock Actual shock. Don't be, don't be, don't be, don't be, you know, son. What have we got for that 200k? Just nothing. He's just been injured for basically most of the. Oh, no, we got one thing. We got a. He made a cameo against Sheffield United, I think, last season and conceded two goals. Um, that's basically. Solid. It's a solid performance from the Solid moment. performance, really. You know, he got taken off at half time and we came back to draw the game. Um, Absolutely crazy. Wow. Wow. Are you sure you guys are going to take him? You know, I, you know, we'll pass. We'll pass. Do you know what? I, I, I think there's a pub team around the corner that are looking for some players. <laughs> <laughs> the, even the, the, the deepest of uh, Jack Stevens naysayers would still prefer Jack Stevens all day long. I, I don't know no. about that. I've, I've, been on that. No. I've, been, I've been on the forums and <laughs> I don't uh, like him. Yeah. I don't think you know. I don't think you know what playing with Phil Jones is like, though. This is this is also one reason why no one can argue for me that Svalix Bergson is the greatest manager of all time because somehow he managed to win a Premier League with Phil Jones and Chris Smalling as centre back. That's why for me he's the greatest manager of all time because I don't know any coach, even Pep Guardiola, that could win a title with that man as a centre back. I just I, I just don't know if it's possible. I just really really don't. <laughs> It is absolutely crazy. I mean, just thinking back to our, I mean, the last player I think we had on the five-year deal was Fraser Forster. And mm -hmm. that was the, 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 the time of Les Reed. And, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that was done. And effectively, he was on like 120K. And we were thinking, mm -hmm. like, oh, my goodness. And effectively, mm -hmm. he was good for a season. And then he went out on loan and mm -hmm. was far and beyond our most explosive player. And he was third choice keeper. So mm -hmm. it, it happens to... Uh, the rest of us as well, but my goodness. Yeah, but look at him now. Second choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Where's my, where's my man? I haven't seen Phil. J I mean, you can, you can ask where actually is Phil Jones. I don't think people know where he even is. So yeah. that's, it's, it's pretty Phil good job, actually. You get paid 200k a week and no one knows what you're doing, where you are or where you've been. Yep. 
it's pretty good. <laughs> good life. That's a sweet life. Good life. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, so, just looking at these, some of these predicted lines. Someone's putting a predicted lineup in. Ooh, okay. Uh, yes. So, uh, admitting Valerie's because, of course, Valerie's gone off to Birmingham Apparently, City. Oh, mm. I don't know about that yet. I don't know about that. No, I'm not, I don't know about that one yet. Not concrete. I don't know. Let me look. But looking at this lineup, if if Valerie's still with us, I think that's probably a good shout in terms of of who we'll see. Um, I'm guessing it would be, yeah, that would be all right, actually. That would be okay, and I think Gineppo's fit as well, yeah. So, it's, so... it's that middle of the park you're slightly worried about with no Romeo and no uh, no Diallo. It looks like mm. Josh King is going to Fulham, so I think the Leicester fans are out with that. So, See, so he, he, he was rumored for us as well. We were apparently, mm. apparently looking to swap Shane Long for him. Mm. But that seems like another good. I'm not. I'm glad we haven't got that. I'm glad Fulham have got that. Mm. <laughs> Same reason I'm now looking at it going. I'm glad they got Loftus Cheek and we didn't. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> don't yeah. Try, don't, 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 and I used to get excited when Fulham signed a good player, but now I'm like, no, nah, not going to change anything, is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Valerie in talks with Birmingham City apparently. So we I don't. We do, we do. Well, we need need players, need anyone. Yeah, uh, you and me. We don't need Phil James ever. <laughs> <laughs> We'd rather play with ten men. Um, <laughs> we, we've got through this entire episode without talking about the officials tomorrow night. Um, and mm-hmm. I understand. Uh, I'm just going to bring it up briefly. Uh, we have Mike Dean as as the official. You get this, Jack. Guess who's the uh, on VAR? Yeah. Lee Mason. <laughs> you could not write this, literally. Yeah. It's um I honestly don't know what they're gonna do tomorrow night. I mean whether or not they Mike Dean's gonna try and make up for something and immediately step on the pitch and send off Pogba. Um I don't think yeah. he can do that. But uh I w- I wouldn't be surprised. He 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 Mike Dean does tend to like to just book United players all the time. Um, That's the question. It's more, what side is he going to play? Is it going to be, we're going to see a few Bruno Fernandes penalties or we're going to see a few red cards because it's going to go one way or the other. (laughs) How do we wind up Bruno Fernandes? Yeah, that would be be the way to look at it. Um, But I'm seeing lots of chat about this Minamino thing. Is I, that, think it's, I think it's pretty yeah, much is it right. happening. Well, it was, it was, it was David Ornstein that tweeted it, and David Ornstein is very reliable. So, yeah, mate, um, it looks, um, it looks done from everything I can see. Mm. Wow, that's pretty so that, exciting. That's that actually is fun. happening that's live on the show. Look at that. Oh, Fabrizio fun. Romano is actually, yeah, the green between Southampton and Liverpool Tucks and is imminent, as per David Ornstein. Do you expect to be completed on loan? So, when Fabrizio is even tweeting it, then you're kind of like, okay. Wow, he's having a medical and everything. Look at this. It's a good. It's a good signing. I think. That, I think that's a good. So he, he might. Well, it'd be too late to start. Obviously, uh, tomorrow. But um, maybe in the weekend, getting him in yeah. that position for injured Wilcott as well, who's obviously out. Yeah. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Man, that's crazy. Well. We're about to approach the hour mark, which is probably the longest preview show I think we've ever done, <laughs> ever. Yeah, good, um, good job, guys. But we haven't, we haven't, we d- we haven't done one in a while. But um, considering these games are coming very thick and fast, it's, mm. it's kind of difficult to squeeze them in because you've literally got twenty four hours before your next game. Mm. Um, so there we go. But oh, Andrew, thank you for joining us. No uh, problem, guys. It's been good. It's been great. I've been able to unleash my frustration it's on, like therapy, the, this, on this club yeah. and everything. So. Uh, it's also like a therapy session almost, yeah. you know, it's like a match preview and that's become a therapy session. Like, guys, you know, take Phil Jones, please. <laughs> you know, you go on everyone's show saying that. You literally <laughs> yeah. It's here to push Phil Jones. I know. try to. I'm going to bring Minamino's agent to just say, can you put this in a sweetener in the deal here, you know? So we'll pay them the money, you know, the 20, 30 million to take him, you know? So... Saying pay off his contract and just get rid. That's what I say. It's not worth it. My goodness. But um, but depending on how salty, salty we're feeling post match tomorrow, um, <laughs> you, you're welcome to join us on the. Yeah. On the <laughs> always, the, always the case. But no, um, no problem. Post the link, man. I'll be there. 
but uh, but no, it's definitely definitely appreciated, and we can just hope for a good game that's hopefully not spoiled by the officials. Uh, no dubious VAR decisions have to be made. So for good football, uh, you're going for a one-one, old man G. Jack's going for a one-nil, and I'm going for a one-nil as well. Definitely going for a one-nil. Um, so yeah, we shall see. But uh, as always, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one. All right, see ya. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.